Well, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Miguel Fuentes, and it is Sunday. And so, happy Sunday with the uh, for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so, today we're going to be continuing on a series on First Thessalonians, and we're going to take a look at Chapter Two. And I I made a I made a uh, a a thumbnail that says Scripture portion, and underneath it it's. Uh, but this long up too, and it has these other cost references so that you can look it up on your own. Uh, but I will be reading these cost references as well. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a good day. Amen. So for that being said, let's go ahead and pray first. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the day, Lord. Lord, if you have sin in our hearts, Father, Lord, we repent for what we have done. Lord, we ask of you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would, uh, I pray that you would, uh, send in the Holy Spirit, Lord, and, and, and help us, Lord, not only to be convicted, Lord, but, but Lord, I help us, Lord, to live a righteous life in Christ, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity. Uh, to the, to get into your word together as the body of Christ. And Lord, help us, Lord, to practice the word of God and not hear us only. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So turn with me in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter, sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'll be reading out of the modern English version today. First Thessalonians chapter 2, and it reads, You yourselves know, brothers, that our visit to you was not in vain. But even after we had previously suffered and were shamefully treated at Philipp uh, Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to declare to you the gospel of God uh, add much uh, oppression uh, opposition for our exaltation was not from deceit nor from uncleanness nor in golly but as we were allowed by God to be entrusted with the gospel even so we speak not to please men but God who examine our hearts. For neither at any time did we come with flatter, flattering words, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is our witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, neither from you or from others. Even through we must, that we may have made demands as the apostle of Christ. But we, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse caring for his own, sorry, for, blah, 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 like a nurse caring for her own children. So having great love towards you, we were willing to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you were dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and, and toll, laboring night and day, so as not to be an expense to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. You and God are witnesses of pure, sorry, of how pure, upright, and blameless we ourselves uh, behaved among you who believe. As you know, we, ex we exalt, comfort, 
and commanded every one of you, as a father does his own children, that you would walk in a matter of uh, walk in a manner worthy of God, who has called you to His kingdom and glory. For this reason, we thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you receive it at, not as the word of men, but as it truly is the word of God, which effectively works also in you who believe. For you, brothers, became fellows, so followers of the church of God, while in Judea are in Christ Jesus, your own countrymen, as you have from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. They do not please God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved. In this way, they are also pulling up their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the extreme. But we, brothers, being taken from you for a short time, in presence, not in heart, and diversed all the more abundant to see your face with great desire. Therefore, we wish to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hinder us. For well, what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Would it not even be you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? You are our glory and joy. That's the end of chapter 2. Very interesting what Paul has said. Let's see here. And there are many references uh, to this book. For example, in verse 4, we know, beloved brothers, your. Oh, sorry. But as we were allowed by God to entitle with the gospel, even so, we speak not to please men, but God, who examine our hearts. I think this this, this verse um, is 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 really about um, you know God came with power, as they say. In in Galatians chapter two verse seven, this reminds me of this verse. Galatians 2 verse 7 reads, On the contrary, they saw that I was entitled with the gospel to the uncircumcised, as the gospel to the circumcised was to Peter. So he was, Paul was the guy who is also known as the apostle for the, for the, uh, for the Gentiles. Amen. And this is what's very, very interesting. Um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, so, and, and also in uh, Psalms uh, 17, verse 3. It says, you have examined my heart. You have visited me in the night. 
you have uh, tried me and found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth will not transgress. Okay? So we see that there. In verse 12, it says that you were walked in a manner worthy of God, who has called you to his kingdom and glory. And I see this in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse, verse 1. And it reads, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, exalt you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you were called. Okay, you can see that there. Um, let's see here. And uh first Peter chapter five first uh, Peter chapter five verse ten But after you have suffered a little while the grace sorry, the God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory through G through Christ Jesus we restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Okay? And lastly, for not least, for this conference is uh, in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, chapter eight verse 28. reads we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose very beautiful verse amen so I think I think First uh, Thessalonians chapter two is pretty interesting. Um, and uh, and what I learned from this chapter is that number one, God, God is the one who tests our hearts, because without, you know, even as the Bible says that 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 we should examining ourselves. Uh, if you are in the faith or not, that Paul talks about, and 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 I learned how to really make sure that am I following the Word of God? I am I, you know, practicing the Word of God, or or if my heart is contrary to to what the Word is saying. Yeah, my heart, you know, to be honest, yes, I've been sinned so many times. And I'm glad that God forgave me, but yet my heart is, is, is unclean. And so i got to learn how to you know, focus on God and, 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 and get right with the Lord and get my heart with, with God. And and we see this um in uh you know King uh King Manasseh, you know, in first I think I think it's first Kings. I don't know. I can't remember. Top of my head. Uh, you know, he was wicked. He was the evilest king in Israel at that time. But at the end of his life he repented. 
and uh, and and th there's a, a book called the Prayer of Manasseh, and you know I I I, I haven't read that book yet, but 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 there's a book called the Prayer of Manasseh. So, God is always touching our hearts. Amen. And number two, the gospel shall be preached. See, the gospel is not for just for the Jews. It's also for the Gentiles. Even though I'm not a part of a Gentile, I'm no longer call myself a Gentile. But I'm being reborn or or born again into the kingdom of God as a spiritual Hebrew or a spiritual Jew. Because not only that I don't believe in this this uh how do I say this this place uh the uh, um what's the name of that that doctrine? Uh This place for ism or something like that. I believe that I should obey the word of God fully from Genesis to Revelation and some books of the Apocrypha or the hidden books. There are some books that are not very good. For example, uh the Testament of Solomon or or uh the book of first and second uh, Adam and Eve, or uh, the Gospel of Thomas, you know, which are for agnostics, which I'm not an agnostic, I'm not, and I don't believe on it, because it's nothing but trash, which, you know, if you, if you want me to teach on why, why I don't like, or what's the problem with agnosticism, I'm I'm open to talk about it and why I reject this uh, belief. But again, God is is calling us to preach the gospel to all the world. You know, the internet has been changing a lot lately. And and I gotta tell you, you know, it's getting more crazy every single year than 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 ever before. But yet, God uses the internet for online preachers like myself to proclaim the word of God to those who want to who want to be saved through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus Christ that we got saved in the first place. It's through Jesus Christ that we gain the salvation uh, and, that, and that we need to repent of our sins and turn to Him. Now, do I still keep the dietary laws and the Sabbath and, and, the, and the, uh, the biblical feasts? You know, and that's up to you. But as as a spiritual Jew, I want to obey the whole entire word of God, especially the Torah. Now I'm not saying I'm not I'm not, listen, Jesus Christ fulfilled the laws and the prophet. And you know, there's nothing wrong of me maybe maybe celebrating uh the feast of tabernacle or the feast of boots or the feast of of uh you know, um, the Day of Atonement, you know, or, or, uh, or the Passover feast, because these feasts are a foreshadowing of Christ, that he fulfilled through, through his ministry. And I'm not ashamed of Obeying the word of God. I'm not afraid of practicing the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is in me. Because the Holy Spirit lives in me. 
and Christ reign over my life because I surrender my will, I surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And number three, uh, receive, receive the word of God. I receive the Bible because I believe personally that the Torah is not just the five books of Moses. I believe that the Torah or the instructions is from Gen is from uh, it's from Genesis to Revelation to First and Second Ezra to the Book of Enoch to the Book of Suzanne, the Book of of uh, Bell and the Dragon, uh, the Book of the Apocalypse of Abraham, uh, the Book of First, Second, and Third, Fourth Maccabees. Uh, first and second Ezra, you know, just to name a few. Because not only that, I believe that these are instructions to live righteously in Jesus the Messiah, but if you want to understand these apocryphal books, first you got to understand the old and the new, the the old and the New Testament. And once you familiarize with the scriptures, now you can read the apocryphal books. In 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 some books make a lot of sense, and through the uh, through historical uh, historical uh, facts, through uh, you know like for example like how King Cyrus was prophesied in Isaiah forty five. And I, and I see this, you know, through, you know, the book of Nehemiah, no, uh, Ezra, yeah, the, the, the book of uh, Ezra. And I see, like, the first reign of, of King Cyrus, King of Persia. Uh, yeah. I received the word of God. I received. The prophets, the historical books. The word of God is precious to me, and even if, even if I, you know, even if America get attacked by China or whatever, if 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 I had to, if I had to um, be evacuated. I'm only going to take this, or if the if, or if my my house caught on fire, I'm going to grab this rather than any any books that I have in the bookshelves. Why? Because I love the Word and I practice the Word of God accordingly, and in, in understanding how important it is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and how to live by God's rules and not our not in and not our way. And I understand as as a spiritual Jew, I can see the five books of Moses being fulfilled through Christ Jesus. And not only that, I understand why the Hebrews got to go through this. In order to fulfill the prophecy right down the road into Jesus, into Jesus' ministry. Like for example, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17 talks about idol idolatry forbidden. Or talks about appointing a king or a call to holiness. How to test the prophets. Uh, instructions to uh, celebrate the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Tabernacles or or um, or in Leviticus um, reward for obedience 
helping the poor, the law about slavery, the year of jubilee, the punishment for blasphemy, the year of uh, the sabbatical year, the bread of of the tabernacle, uh, the feast of trumpets, the day of the day of the atonement, offering the first fruits, uh, the Sabbath. Uh, eating clean and unclean foods. Um, learning about the priesthood. All these things that the Israelites had to do. Till Christ returns. Oh sorry. Until Christ comes. And now Judaism. Reject Christ altogether. Except for Messianic Jews. Not only that. The Judaism rejected uh, the prophet Daniel because the prophet Daniel prophesied about the Messiah, and they don't don't want to include their you know they they, they don't want to include that book in their canon of scripture. And so I'm doing research about you know you know different apocryphal books, lost books. And test them through the Word of God. That 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 that's the main purpose of me teaching about these apocryphal books, like the Book of Enoch. I believe the Book of Enoch is very valid uh, historically. What I see in Genesis, um, in the, in the genealogy of Adam, you know, which I'll, I'll cover that in you know in Wednesday night teachings. But I believe that, that the Book of Enoch is very, very valid. Very, very valid. And very accurate, too. Um, especially the prophecy about the Messiah, uh, the Son of Man, rather, um, has been chosen to be the, the you know, his, you know the, the Father, Son, you know, coming down to earth to, to, uh, to make covenant with men. And so it's a beautiful thing to understand these things. But I digress. So I hope that you enjoyed this sermon as I am. I hope you enjoyed this word. Uh, again, I'm going to be finishing off the book of Enoch on, win on Wednesday night. And then I'll be doing another podcast video uh, either on Saturday or Friday or or Sunday morning if I have the time to because uh, I got a date on Saturday rather than today. So. so, yeah. So, that's all I got for today, folks. May God bless you. May God keep you. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.